Hi, right, Jeremy Henke here with Soul Rides. You know, I've been teaching avalanche education to the motorized backcountry community, the sledders, the snow bikers for the past 15 years. I've, I've been a passionate educator for that time because I was buried in a class three avalanche once and it just about killed me. And, you know, out of averaging 120 days a season for the past, you know, 25 years, I've got a lot of experience and near miss stories of my own, but really what I wanted to reach out about today was our current avalanche conditions. You know, we're January 2023. We're having a little bit different of a snow year. We have some shallow uh, areas in our snowpack, you know, like Frisbee Ridge, a common area that people ride in the Revelstoke areas. You know, it's pretty standard. It's two, two and a half meters. It has its usual issues, but What's kind of changed is our surrounding areas, you know, 100 kilometer, 150 kilometer radius of Revelstoke or 80 miles. We have some real variability in what's going on in our snowpack and it's becoming really hard to predict avalanches and the potential for human triggered avalanches are really, it's really prevalent, especially for snowmobilers right now. And we've had a lot of near misses in our area over the past week and one in particular, as we're watching this video here, has kind of gone fairly viral around our social media outlets like Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And I wanted to discuss a few things uh, a little bit here and, and, uh, and get my opinion out there for the public. You know, I like to high mark. I should climb shoots. But it takes a bit of skill to really understand what sort of snowpack you're riding on when you're taking those big risks. And when you take big risks like that, it, you know, you don't, when you first started to drive, you didn't drive down the highway in a blizzard and pass a semi, you know, you, you erred on the side of caution and being in the backcountry with a motorized piece of equipment is really similar. It takes education, and understanding about the risks that you're trying to manage. And what bothers me is when, you know, it doesn't bother me when people take risks, but what bothers me is when they don't recognizing that they're really increasing their risk. You know, your dad didn't teach you to drive overnight. You learn the gas pedal, the brake, then you practice that for a little bit. Then you learn what a signal light does and what, and what the stop sign means. And then you drove around a small town for a while. And then you graduated into a city and now you've become the driver that you are today. And some of us have higher risk tolerances than others. And, uh, but somehow we managed to get up and down these highways uh, and do it quite safely. The backcountry is really similar. You know, basically what's going on is imagine if I gave you a brand new Ferrari and put you downtown Tokyo. How well are you going to do? You understand how to drive. You understand how to use the machine, but you don't understand the, bat or the road etiquette or how to read the billboard or understand what the road signs mean. So you might get away with it for a while because you understand the fundamentals of driving, but it's only a matter of time till you get in an accident. And understanding how to manage avalanche hazard isn't much different. A lot of our industry has got went out and got like an AST-1 or some entry-level avalanche education. But to be hill climbing and high marking or descending big pieces of avalanche terrain takes a little bit more skill and understanding. So a message that I like to get out to people is, hey, if you want to ride the boulders or the frisbees or the simple avalanche train, cool, get a simple avalanche course. But if you want to get out there and push your limits, you're going to need a better understanding. You're going to need to ladder up your game and enter into like a level two or a level three understanding. You know, in this particular uh, incident that we're watching here is not far from my home. And man, I just I can't help but recognize where the person or the individual decided to climb. You know, as he climbed and he, he was really, really lucky in this incident because he got up to where he triggered the slab and he kept climbing up outside of the slab or the debris that was traveling down slope. So he's really, really lucky because if you look at the fall line and trajectory, he would have been pushed into the terrain trap on the looker's left-hand side of this avalanche. And, you know, I was there the other day and Man, I'd estimate that depth there to be anywhere from 40 to 50, 60 feet. So I don't care on how much you've practiced rescue. You have 10 to 15 minutes to live. You get buried in a terrain trap like that, we're not getting you out. It's going to take us a long time. And, 
You know, I also want people to recognize that when you take such risks like this, you're not just risking your own life, but the people that are viewing this situation, and if you were to actually get buried, they're going to be affected. Your family's going to be affected by your decision making. And also the people that have to come recover bodies is also it's very effect, uh, um, <clears throat> affected for those people. So I would just want people to understand, like, I'm not about being the Karen of the backcountry or the police of the backcountry. I like risk. I like managing risk. It, it's part of life. But what I really dislike is when people really don't understand when they're really increasing their risk. So to do the activities of high marking or, or shoot climber or big descents, it takes skill. It's not just watching a video and saying, hey, I'm going to pull this shoot. Um, you got to understand the snowpack. So get out there, get educated, learn how to use an avalanche bulletin to, to understand the snowpack, learn how to analyze snow observations, learn rescue. It's a graduated process and it takes a little bit of time. So invest in that.